episode of Video Game Logic. Today's episode was recorded on June the 22nd, 2021. I'm your host, gaming psychologist, and with me, as always, spoding, spoding, sporting a cup of his namesake, Caffeine Rage. On today's show, we'll be discussing games we played this past week, or me, from our pre-show discussion. Um, warning, Marvel's Avengers is showing your IP address on screen after its new patch. Ubisoft DRM breaks Might and Magic X Legacy Single Player DLC. Fallout 76's Battle Royale game mode Nuclear Winter closes this September. Uh, we're going to be covering some community corner stuff. We had quite a few suggestions, uh, or rather, uh, submissions. And we're going to be going over a couple of those this week. And if time allows, we'll be having a Steam Discovery queue. Although, given the fact that we're starting half an hour late, that might get cut. Uh, and as always, timestamps will be in the show notes following the respective topics. Hello, Rage. Hello. What's shaking, Megan? Uh, well, the processor wasn't the problem, so on to the RAM, right? In, indeed. I was going to say, whatever you said, I was going to say, so tell. let's just go ahead and tell everybody about your new woes this week, but you went ahead with that, so good job taking the initiative. Uh, on the plus side, the computer's doing a new thing, so it's attempting to get through the boot process. It's just throwing a new error now. Which does make it make me at least feel hopeful that the previous issues are now fixed, and you just happen to get like the trifecta of shit. When... Yeah, I, I, honestly, it, it's just pure guesswork now of what's going on because my initial problem was, uh, well, first of all, Gigabyte sucks with their documentation, so trying to troubleshoot anything that's uh, uh, hardware related with. No info on error messages outside of four LEDs on the on the motherboard, and no real indication on what they do. Yeah, a little tough, right? Indeed. So little little hard to discern uh, much black magic from four four little lights. Yeah, turns out there are four lights, <laughs> and some of them turn on. Uh, Star Trek? No. <laughs> uh, Makes any- when it makes me think of the uh line from the first avengers movie it's like well, tell me what do you see captain america and he's like oh it's or it seems to run on so- some form of electricity it's like, well <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> uh so uh some google foo said okay either processor or motherboard so uh with the possibility leaning more towards motherboard swap that out still the same issue well, okay. Well, I guess I should say exactly what the lights are. They they indicate uh, the three primary steps before it uh, essentially goes into full startup mode and goes to the BIOS and starts on software. Uh, the one that was lighting up was processor, but that also could indicate that the board is just dead and it's just you know, stuck on the first loop. Well, replace the uh, motherboard, still doing the same thing. Uh, replace the processor. At first, it was still doing the same thing, and I'm not sure if I was just not giving enough time. Oh, my phone was not silenced. I thought it was. Whoops. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it was still doing the same thing, or it just, yeah, it's like, okay, fine, fine. Uh, new processor, whatever. So now it's failing on the DRAM check, and did the typical uh, trouble shooting stuff with swapping out the memory, uh, trying only one module, trying uh, the other module trying it in all the slots. But to be honest, even loading up with literally no RAM in the system, it's doing the same error. That's a bad sign. Right? Yeah. So, thankfully, prom day is today. And while I'm still sending back the uh, memory that is sitting on my desk right now, packaged up, or at least in its uh, retail packaging, uh, I have a new pair of uh, Corsair uh, RAM inbound as I'm about to send out the old. So, hopefully, once this is all done, I'll be rocking 32 gigs of RAM, which is something. That's I, a sweet feeling to when when you do that. It was something I wanted to do eventually. And it's just they were asking me, okay, do you want to uh, uh, put down a deposit for your uh, for uh, a new uh, set of RAM until we get the old or which it's the manufacturer suggested retail price, which would be the hundred some bucks that are likely that Amazon lists, right? Yeah. And it's just 
at that rate, why don't we just buy the fucking RAM and go through the normal RMA? So Indeed. Yeah, having 32 gigs of RAM is sweet. It's it's unnecessary unless you're a content creator on a level much higher than what we are. But it's still like, yeah, that's right. I got 32 gigs of RAM. I don't got to worry about anything. Yeah, Chrome will be just all you eat buffet. All right? All you can eat. Indeed. Although it's it's it, interesting. It would be like, like me at a Chinese buffet. It's one of those things. It's like the more RAM you have, the more that Windows uses by default. And it makes a difference on a lot of a lot of programs and, and applications, how they'll just respond quicker because they're sitting in, in RAM. And, it, I mean, you know, it, on the one hand, like, well, duh. But on the other hand, you don't think about it until you've got, you know, a, yeah. around eight. Uh, Windows 10, if it's allowed to flex, uses like eight gigs of RAM mm-hmm. by default. So, you know, when you've got like 24 spare gigs of RAM hanging out there. It uh, it puts it to work. Yeah, let's just put it this way. Uh, on the laptop, uh, having a little bit issue because it only has, a, I think it's two gigs of RAM. Two or four gigs. Yeah. So it's just, oof, right? I think it was four. Yeah, it was four gigs. Yeah, that's right. Like right now, with basically nothing open, a couple of Chrome tabs, Audacity, and Discord, really. Uh, my computer's using 11 gigs of RAM. Yeah, just, right now. Just chilling. With Firefox, which is a lot leaner, uh, and Audacity, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and Amazon Music, because I need my tunes. Uh, I'm sitting at 3.4, so 80%. Yeah, I'm using a cool 34%. But but I'm also running only like 25 to 30% of my CPU, because I am uh, have the computer plugged in, so it's in, uh, so it's running at full power or full power before doing bio stuff which i might be able to do i'm not sure it just i have not wanted to fuck with this computer at all you know until i get the other one unfucked according to this graph i'm using nine percent of my cpu so that's you know neat also i guess i don't look at i don't look at task manager very often yeah for... and, and who wants to give uh odds on uh the video card not wanting to boot now Right. Oh God, I can. I have a couple of spare video cards. I could just send you. They're not going to be as good as the the of what as what you've got, but I can just send you a video card to get you up and running a yeah. lot faster than going through a pro. Your process would be well. Well, the thing it would be, I would either be integrated graphics or my old Radeon, which would likely still be uh, uh the integrated graphics would probably be the better option, honestly, especially with uh overall thirty two gigs of RAM to throw at it. I think I've got an RX 570 in there in a in a box. It might be a 560. That would be better than integrated graphics. But otherwise, my other options to send you would be probably on par with AMD's, you know, it, uh, with Ryzen's integrated graphics. Because I've got like a couple of old like GT7 series cards. I think I've got a 730 or a 760, like. Not not any of the ones that are for, for gaming. The ones that are more like, yes, this is for some light photo editing type stuff and to give you extra monitor outs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, but, th- this has been a process, huh? It, it definitely has been a process. And the thing is, I still don't know what caused it in the first place. I'm not sure if I just hit a random power spike, if the uh, head splitter uh, had a short in it, but even if it did, it, it should have either fried the motherboard or... Uh yeah, uh fried the pro- uh fried the uh power supply. It should not have hit RAM and memory, or, or sorry, memory and uh, CPU. That's just it's weird. And the thing is that the CPU presented itself as an issue as well. It's not. It wasn't guesswork. It was, yeah. CPU is the first thing it tries to load up, and it just wasn't working. Yeah, either that or. When it was in South Charleston, it got too close to the mound, and I got, like, a, a Native American ghost uh, in the machine, you know? Yeah. Got, uh, filled your, your PC with the spirits. Just give it some peyote, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> Honestly, with some of the troubleshooting, it feels like I've been on peyote trying to figure out what the fuck. That's fair. So this will That's be... very fair. So, literally the only things from the old um, initial build remaining will be the case... And the power supply, or the case of power supply in the video card. 
I've replaced essentially half the uh, the computer. Yep the the computer of Theseus. Yep. I know we had that conversation. Did we have that on the show or did we have that? No, I no, I tweeted it? that out. I tweeted that out uh, uh, after the processor uh, uh, turned out be not the problem or not the entire problem. And right. The, and the thing is, I didn't have spare parts to be able to try to swap out to see if it was just that or if it was something else as well. Yeah. Because I'm honestly. Cutting- yeah, because honestly, yeah, keeping a spare a processor like that, unless I um, have a completely second computer uh, up and running, is yeah a little wasteful. Yeah, just a bit. Although you could use it for some other project or something. That's what I do. Spare parts and, and stuff for, for projects. Although I regularly take old PCs from people and office PCs and rebuild them and you know give them to people like at the clinic who need them mm-hmm. or clients who need a computer or stuff like that like i do that all the time so it kind of it makes sense for me to have spare parts for stuff lying around yeah i gotta but admit most that, of it's old stuff so yeah i gotta admit that part of me wants to next time i'm at goodwill just go like okay here's 15 bucks i'll take all your computers <laughs> yeah all of them i'm getting uh images from uh parks and rec where with ron swanson it's like Wait, wait. What I what I think you heard is I want lots of bacon and eggs. What I said was I want all the bacon and eggs that you have. I'm picturing you doing that with a with a <laughs> you know a cashier or something, but it's it's for computers. So you're like, wait. I said I wanted all of them. Yeah. So uh, my my computer is in a different process because I replaced all of it naturally. Nothing broke except for my power supply. My old power supply burned up, and somehow didn't take the rest of the computer with it, which I was glad of but uh, the only thing that i have from my original build actually is nothing i've replaced everything i was gonna say it was the processor but that was the first thing i upgraded on the old build and now it's the only thing that's left because i got a new motherboard i've had new drives new ram new two new graphics cards new power supply new case i transplanted the whole thing into a different case Mm -hmm. and look at it this way if you send the video card you could send uh, the cast iron pan as well Yep, I know I still haven't done that. Well, I Uh, I still have the air fryer I need to send out as well. That's true. (laughs) I was thinking about that earlier. Like, I got paid. I said I was going to wait until after I got paid, but then we had a couple of surprise expenses. It's like, well, not going to ship that now. I'll do it next time. Uh, Oh, it's more, you know, picking. Yeah. It's good. I don't, I'm not, I know that you're just ribbing me. We love each other. Hate me, hate me. I think I love you more. Hate me. I think I love you more, but just because you wouldn't do sexual things to my body. Hate me. <laughs> well, I'll hate you, all right. All right, so you, you didn't have anything to put on the list for games play. I, I mean, I technically uh, did, and I forgot about it, but then on, on retrospect, yeah, I could wait a week on it and actually uh, I get a little bit uh, more uh, time with it, because JRPG, right? Right. So I I have two... One of them is going to be so fast, and I think the other one is going to be pretty quick. So I'm going to start with with the weird one. Uh, Only Cans Thirst Date. I This is free on Steam, so anyone can go play this for a laugh. Um, and honestly, it sounds like it's uh, you get what you pay for. It's weird and not really fun, but if you're a person like me, it's compelling. Like... It it says it's a dating simulator. That's it, not it, true. And it's listed as adults only. Yeah, there's there's no nudity. The 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 no, no, there are no Well, uh, I don't know. These cans look very naked to me. <laughs> That's right. He's gonna show you some cans. Um Well no, not, the, not the type of cans uh, you're probably uh, usually associated with, but still. Yeah, so its tags are listed as LGBTQ plus, NSFW, dark comedy rhythm and 3d all of those fit it's 3d um there are definitely lots of like well what about psychological horror uh eh, it's more weird than horror um the it's it's a rhythm game or with really two three aspects to that left mouse click right mouse click and then sort of a a a bar that goes back and forth to serve as like a, a timing bar and you'll either have to left mouse click right mouse click and then you want to get as close to the center 
of the little thing on the bar. You can see it in the screenshots. It looks like a little cloud or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's supposed to be like fizzy, like soda explosion, but it, it just looks like a cloud. And it's so, an explosion in your mouth. <laughs> I'll get there. Left click or right click as as the bar passes through that, and you can see on the screen as well. Um, in, in the screenshots, it'll you know it says snap for left click, spray for right click, but there's also you know on screen prompts you can use the uh, the arrow keys for it. I just use the mouse. It take it took me about an hour to play through the whole game. It's not difficult, and there's a the first few are kind of funny, like haha, this is called Scheitza. The, the soft drink company, which if anyone doesn't know, that's the German word for shit. Um, and there's little descriptions for all the cans that it, like the flavors and they're kind of funny, kind of cutesy. And it's, you know, a little silly that every time you like do it well, like, you know, click with with good timing and, and do the right click and everything. And the can makes like a sexy moan noise or whatever. They've got different voice actors. The quality varies like. I mean, this this is a project where I think where someone was like to all of their friends, like, "Hey, do some like sexy moans for me into whatever microphone you've got and give that to me." Because some of them are good, be like good quality. Some of them very clearly sound like they've been recorded into like a crappy, you know, lapel mic or something. Also, oh, basically, even, like, our quality, a worse than our quality. Damn, that's bad. Um, some of them, you know, they're they're themed around stereotypes for the most part, especially in the beginning. They get to some weird, weirder stuff at the end, but in the beginning, it's stereotypes. So, like, you know, the dominatrix, and there's one that's a vampire, and there's one that's like, uh, like a male stripper, and then there's like, um, uh, like a line dancer, like flapper type of girl, like you know, different themes. Sometimes it, they do some juxtaposition with like, like a, um. You know, the, the can presents very, I don't know, like it, it one stereotype and it's got a voice from another stereotype. It's and it's funny for a little while. It's never it's not sexy at all, but it's funny. And then it just kind of starts to get old. But for someone like me who's compelled by this and the fact that like the very last can, like you, you can't see that whatever the next one is until you unlock it. It just says, you know, keep playing to unlock more cans. And then the very last one says, don't unlock this don't play this so you know they got you with like you know a little psychological hook of like oh i gotta get to the end and see what it is and i won't spoil it for anyone who wants to look it up or well, you or can play text it, it you know, to me actually play it yeah uh because right yeah you know i'm not gonna play this there you go oh uh, of course Yep, and so that's that's the last one. What I what I just sent to you, Rage. But you know, anyone else who wants to play it, it's free. You can look it up on YouTube. Game Theory did a video about the st- story behind this game, or whatever. I haven't watched that video. I have no idea if it's any good or not. I mean, eh, it was an experience I had at one in the morning when I was kind of sleepy. You know, it uh, didn't cost anything, so all I wasted was my time. <laughs> but if it did cost something, I it's not even worth like a dollar like the 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 person who made this knew what they had like a weird little fun project they released it for free it's probably going to be a stepping stone for something that they're working on in the future great for them anyone who likes it awesome i'm certainly not one to judge but it just openly eh. it was it was just a you know an odd curiosity to me the only the one that sticks out the most in my mind honestly uses the same uh, like there's a different song for each of them and they're all kind of generic songs like the you know the one the can that's like a japanese girl has got some you know sort of japanese like techno pop generic sounding music like the vampire has got like some dark and creepy music or whatever uh there's one that uses the the background like trumpet song from the ev- every episode of the gymquisition <laughs> and so that one was memorable. So that um, one was Jim uh, Stephanie Sterling, right? Or Son. at least it should be now. Yeah, I it was it wasn't. I, I I heard the song and I was like, no, please, did they? But no, they did not. It's just some random voice actor. That was the one I was the most disappointed by. And then oh, and when you finish every level, like it's on a timer. Even if you completely fail, you still succeed and get the next can unlocked. And at the end of every level. Like the can like blows its load by like popping open and spraying out mm-hmm. uh, a 
liquid color that matches like the exterior of the can. Um, and like I said, there's some weird ones towards the end uh, before you even get to the the finale. I'll say that there's some weirder stuff that starts to. It's like, okay, we know we're losing you with the gameplay mechanic, and we haven't lost you already. But look, weird, wacky story stuff in the descriptions of these cans. So, yep, only cans. They're state. It's free. So all you've got to waste is your time. Uh, the other game I played is a uh, Sword Art Online Re Hollow Fragment, which weird name. Um, well, it's for Japanese. starters, that very true. For starters, this is a remaster of a remaster. Um, the the game originally came out in 2013 for PSP, and it had a completely different name. I think it was called like Infinity. It's sorted online, like Infinity Fabric or Infinity Fragment or something. Infinity Wars? (laughs) Sure, Infinity Wars. And then it got an expansion um, that was released on PS Vita in 2014. And you could import your save data if you, you know, had it on an SD card and put that from the PSP into the PS Vita. Then it got remastered for PlayStation 4 with the name Hollow Fragment, and that combined the base game and the expansion. And it it really is an expansion. It's not just DLC. Like, it added a whole another area. Like, big. I'll talk about it in a minute. So, anyways. It got remastered for the PS4, and then remastered again for PC, and was released in 2018 on PC, and it includes... All of it. There was there were some minor DLCs that were released, and this includes everything. And so they stuck the re, for whatever reason, between Sword Art Online and Hollow Fragment. So it's Sword Art Online re colon Hollow Fragment. So now that that's out okay, of the way, okay. Okay, so they're replying to a, a email that's about Hollow Fragments. I guess so. They might be. You get a lot of messages in this game. Um, uh, now you just gotta really watch out for that B- uh, BCC. Indeed. So, this game applies, I think, to only two audiences, and anybody else could skip it. Not because it's bad, but because it would get really boring after a while. It, it's it's for someone who likes the show, Sword Art Online, um, and didn't like the way that the first season of the show ended, um, or for people who really like an MMO experience, but hate the... Uh, one of the M's, the the multiplayer. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, if you've already played enough of uh, Dragon Age Inquisition and want to play something that's JRPG. Yes. So, I mean, huge spoilers, I guess, for season one of Sword Art Online. Um, it, at the end of the, the first season, the big bad guy gets discovered to have been in... SAO all along, like, pulling the strings. And the main character fights him and beats him, and he lets everyone out of the game early because Kirito, the main, you know, the the protagonist, beats him. In in this game, that doesn't, like, he beats him, but something happens, and Uh, God damn it, I didn't QA test the game uh, uh, enough. This is what I get for a game published by Bethesda. Exactly. Some, Some people think, in the game, think that it was a glitch, some people think that the big bad guy was just screwing with them, but you have to keep doing the original goal, which is to beat all 100 floors of the game world to be released. And so you start on floor 76, which is the, the first season ends uh, after oh no, floor 76. Oh no, oh no, 76. No! I know. Oh no, you're right. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. But you, you start on floor 76, and you have to fight up... Uh, you have to beat all the remaining floors. And at first I wasn't sure if there was going to be, like, some some floor skips or, you know, like, focus on, like, bigger moments and be like, ah, yes, we've been battling for months and we made it to floor 90 or whatever. But no, nope. you fight floor by floor up the rest of, of the game. I'm on floor 83 or 84. And it's it's an MMO, but you but that's single player. It's It's very much like... The closest thing that I can think of that it plays to is like World of Warcraft if there was more freedom of movement or the movement was more fluid perhaps. 
it's it's got auto attack so you know just like any mmo or not maybe not any but most mmos you select a target you get in range and start attacking it with your auto attack and then you have skills and abilities that you put on hot bars that you can use and they're all on cooldowns and you just have to be in range and then basically there's stat checks to see if you hit the enemy and that's it it's it's a bit flashier it's got the sword of online animations and uh effects and things like that um whenever you do attacks and kill enemies and whatnot but i mean that's the entire combat loop is like an mmo you know hot bar combat system and if you don't like that it would be terrible if you do like that it pulls off a really really compelling loop and gives you plenty of choice and ways that you can interact with the system there's sort of a, I guess, a canon way to play that matches the show, which is generally uh, how I want to play it anyways. But it does give you some variants. You can use all of the weapon types that are seen in the show. You have no skills in them because Kirito, like you are playing Kirito, and he uses one-handed swords, and then he's the only person in the game that can dual wield. And so all of his skills and stats are tailored to that at the start of the game. And so if you want to do something different, you're going to be grinding, which you're going to be doing anyways, because this is an MMO. But you will be doing some extra grinding to get those skills up to parity with where you start the game anyways. And it does, it starts you at level 100, like player level 100, which I thought was a nice touch because it makes you feel super powerful, but also basically it's like level one, um, which was cool. Um, it, and it plays, especially in the beginning of the game, it plays in that power fantasy thing really well that Sword Art Online does. It's like, oh, Kirito is so cool. He, like, beat a boss on his own with his secret powers that nobody knew about because he's a weirdo. Like, it it plays on that really well. So, again, like I said, fans of the show will like this because it plays up the power fantasy a lot. And then, of course, you get to interact with all the main characters from the show. There's some weird bullshit that means some other characters from later seasons show up so that you can interact with them as well. Um, and the main gameplay loop is you go out onto whatever floor you're on Kill monsters, complete quests, grind your your stats up, find the floor boss, kill it, move up to the next floor. W- rinse and repeat. Um, there's story stuff for each of the companion characters, which are the main characters, or I guess the you know the most prominent side characters from the show. For anyone who watches, think characters like Asuna or Leafa or uh, Lisbeth, to name a few. Klein, they're, they're all there. Um, there's a couple of, of characters that were created whole cloth for the game. Um, but, you know, they, they all fit within their roles within the show. So, um, and you can, they all have uh, story quests that they can go on. You There's a, a bit of a relationship system. Um, you can build relationships with any character. There's a hundred named NPCs or 110 na- named NPCs that aren't the, you know, quote, main characters. And you can build relationships with them. You can take them on quests with you to level them up, which you're going to have to do if you want to get through without many people dying. Because the thing of Sword Art Online is you're trapped in the game, you die in the game, you die in real life. So, you know, you don't want people to die. And so, you know, you quest with these people, you help them level up. Um, You can, uh, once you build enough relationship with them, that you can equip them yourselves. So weapons, clothing, whatnot. Um... The main characters are more limited in that sense because they each have their thing that they do from the show. So if a character uses rapiers, you can't just give them a battle axe. Oh, but... this is that attitude. <laughs> I've tried. Battle axes and two-handed swords are the best weapons for NPCs to have because they make much more limited use of their skills than you do. And those weapons just have the biggest raw DPS numbers. So for the auto attacks, they're the best to have around. Um, there's some limited commands you can give, uh, such as, you know, telling them to use healing items or telling them to focus on like support skills. So, you know, buffs, debuffs, that sort of thing. Tell them to focus on attacking. You can tell them to use a skill, like you can assign a skill. And then when you press the button, it's like, use your skill, whoever they use that skill if, if it's available to them. And they'll, they'll say like, oh, I can't if it's on cooldown or something like that. Um, it it does add. Now is there weird... now is there people just spamming uh, trade chat uh, with uh, 
you know, random bullshit while you're trying to sell your junk? <laughs> sort of. There are people who walk around. There's like a market area of the, the town that counts as like your home base town. And there are people that walk around the street yelling like, items for sale. I'm looking for this item <laughs> with the little the little chat box above their head. They but, might actually be saying it. The whole game is in Japanese. There's just English subtitles and text. So, and they they say random stuff as you walk around. So maybe they're shouting items for sale in Japanese. I don't know. Yeah, that's far too realistic. Uh, uh, it just needs to be people fighting, cussing one another, and a lot of uh, you know, racist bullshit. Right. If my You're time, right. There's not enough racism in Sword uh, Art Online. If my time and wow is anything to go by, at least. Yeah. There's, but, um, it adds this very, like, light dating sim to the game. Um, Sword Art Online has many of the hallmarks of a harem show, but the two main characters, Kirito and Asuna, have a committed relationship to one another that solidifies pretty early on in the show. And as far as anime relationships go, is a pretty healthy fleshed out relationship there's some stuff on their awkwardness because they're both teenagers um when when the show starts um and there's some weird stuff there and of course a few situations that are set up for comedic relief but they are a committed couple to one another and there's never any like cheating or infidelity or implied anything they're like just two people who have a fairly healthy relationship which is weird for any anime that's not specifically about that from my experience. Uh, Chivalry um, of a Failed Knight. Yes, Chivalry of a Failed Knight is my other one. They have a great relationship in that. Yeah, in I that watched show. it not too long ago. Really, it's been a few years since I've seen it. Yeah, but... I really wish uh, uh, I, there was a season two, but eh. Uh, it's just, well, I need to go watch Asterix Wars, which is essentially uh, pretty much the same show, not quite. But... I've seen the first season of Asterix War, and it's a lot more flashy, but ultimately not as satisfying. Because mm-hmm. the storytelling is not as good. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a fine show. Like, it's not bad. It's just, you got a, you know, high school tournament battle anime. You know, you you get sort of what's on the 10. But anyways, um, so it's it, it adds this dating sim thing where that you can date other girls from the show. And as someone who watches the show and who likes it, that feels very odd to me. There's like an in, in-story thing that like sort of lets you off the hook. It's like, oh no, so they get, Kirito and Asuna get married in the show slash in the game, like you can marry other players in in SAO, and there's a thing that happens, it's like, oh no, our marriage data was corrupted, and we're no longer married, and you can choose to not fix it, but there's a quest line to fix it, and immediately, like as soon as that popped up, like I hopped on that, getting that fixed, because it just feels weird to me to go against, like I'm I'm role-playing as Kirito, it feels weird to go against that. But, of course, there are people who, who are more interested in the other characters. And one of the characters you can date is his sister, Kirito's sister. Japan. So, that's... Yeah. So, uh... uh yeah, I, I didn't think Japan was south of the Mason-Dixon line, but it turns out that they are. <laughs> turns out they are. So, there are, you know, each, each of the characters has a quest line. Um, with most of them being females, that's kind of how the dating progresses. Like, if you make certain choices within the quest that makes your relationship get closer on a romantic level, um, then they become interested and available for dating, or you can, you know, just be their friend and help out. And so I always pick that option, whichever one is just like, oh yeah, no, I'm helping you, I'm your friend. Um, and Asuna is the only character who I've pursued the dating stuff with, because she's the, the waifu. Like, literally, she's the waifu. So, that's, uh... I, I you I think you said the other night that I was pursuing the canon route. Yeah. And then that's that's the main part of the game in the original release. The other one is adding something called the hollow area, which is like, oh, it's a secret development area that Kirito somehow stumbled into, and it's got really high-level monsters and special loot and new characters. Very cool. And, I mean, it is, but it's more of the same of, like, dungeon crawling, grinding areas. There are six really large overworld areas. I would say that the entire hollow, quote-unquote, hollow area is about the same size as half of the main game, based on what I've seen so far. Um, And it's got repeatable daily quests, 
and uh, repeatable like boss rooms and challenge areas and stuff like that. So it's pretty much exclusively just for grinding for XP and resources and crafting materials. So it's an MMO, a single player MMO. Um, if you like Sword Art Online, or if you like the idea of a single player MMO that gets as close to that experience as possible without the racism, uh, <laughs> buy this game. Because of how old it is and the fact that it would, you know, was designed to run on a PSP and then a PS Vita and then like a PS4, if you've got a half decent PC from, you know, that's even like seven, eight years old, you should be able to run this game, no problem. It's much better played with a controller than keyboard and mouse. Doable with keyboard and mouse, but better with a controller. Um, so I would suggest that. And, I mean, right now, it's five bucks on Steam. Uh, looks like that sale will be over, though, by the time the show is goes up, unfortunately. But, I mean, it goes on sale all the time. I bought it for, uh, like, four bucks or something like that. I'd have to go look at my history. But, I mean, it regularly goes on sale for this price. And... I, I'm not kidding. I, I'm pretty sure that if you want to beat the whole thing, like one playthrough, 100 to 150 hours, I've seen that it's got things like New Game Plus and like a challenge mode and some extra stuff that unlocks after you beat it. I've read that it's got multiple endings depending on what sort of, you know, depending on which character relationships you build and your romantic and the, partner. And probably who dies because, right? And, yeah, and who dies. Um, the game doesn't let you progress if you die obviously and if any of the main side characters die as far as i can tell because i've been out you know doing a a boss battle or something and it's like oh no uh asana died or you know whoever and it reloads your last uh, last save automatically but all is for like the the less important side characters can die and you get a little counter for, like, how many people have died every time you go to check, like, the the floor information. Oh, sort of like how uh, Battlestar Galactica did it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it tells you who has died. And so I've had two people die so far. Oh, so, so much for the perfect drought, huh? Yeah. I was, I, was doing re- I was doing so good. I got to floor 82. Nobody had died. And uh, the, the boss for floor 82 did a lot of AoE attacks. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the AI is kind of stupid, kind of dopey. And so no matter what I did, I couldn't pull enough aggro on the boss to keep it focused on me and Asana, um, who, you know, the AI, the AI for your partner is also a little bit dull, but since you can give them commands, you can kind of work around that. But it, it brings in uh, like six other characters to, to fight Um the boss and like it tells you ahead of time so you can try to like level them and stuff but even then with so many aoe attacks i could not keep them alive so i had two of them die it was very sad Eh, i actually felt sad Nah, never liked them anyway yeah so sao if if you're the sort of person that likes this type of game you will love it if you're not i don't think there's a reason to play it so there you go a very specific recommendation so basically, got, if it's for you, play it. If not, eh. Yeah, is, I'm not sure are, if, uh, which one uh, that applies to me. Because, right? Yeah. I mean, what I've been using it for is I will I will grind um, and listen to podcasts and, and just grind. And then whenever it's time to actually do the main quest-related stuff or fight, like, floor bosses, I will uh, actually, like, turn on the music, the, the in-game music, and focus on the game. And it's it's good for that. It's sort of like uh, me with... I'm not going to talk about it this week. I'm going to give it one more week to get a little bit further. Because it still feels like I'm just getting out of the tutorials yeah. uh, with Nito Cooney. Yeah. Which that'll be next week, hopefully. I mean, it's just... Oof. I, I, I got some thoughts on that one. And not all of them are positive. Right. Well, I look forward to it. There are five games on Steam from Sword Art Online that apparently go through all of the seasons of the show. So, eventually I'll finish this one, and I've already got the second one, uh, which is called Lost Song. So, eventually I'll get to that one. Lost Song looks like just a better game, or maybe not better, but a more accessible game overall. 
So we'll see. At, at this rate, it'll take me like six months to get the lost song. I've been averaging about two hours a day in uh, rehollow fragments. <laughs> <laughs> so at that rate, it's going to take me a long time to get through it. But anyways, that's uh, that's it for games we played this week. So we're going to move on and do the news. Um, our first news topic of the night. Marvel's Avengers is showing your IP address on screen after the new patch. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, really? All right. Just... Yeah. Way way to go making it easy to uh DDoS and right? Yeah, DDoS people potentially uh stalk them depending on, you know, just uh how far down the rabbit hole you want to go, right? Yeah, stalk or dox them. It's just how does this get by? Uh, the QA. All oh, right, this is Marvel's Avengers, so most likely there was none. Now, yeah, I will say this. Uh, uh like one quarter of a prop. Uh, that they're quickly hot fixing it and uh, yeah, fixing this issue. However, the fact that it actually got through testing and got to the live servers without anybody thinking, oh wait. Is just absurd. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, just to read from the article. Today's patch has a bug that shows your gamer tag, the date and time, some other numbers, and most significantly your IP address on screen as a string of floating text that bounces from location to location as you play. And it's it's visible to other players. Mm -hmm. Because of course it is. Because of course it is. Um, they're saying, obviously... Uh, if you're planning on streaming the new Avengers update, don't. Just don't. <laughs> yeah, because it's not hard to DDoS somebody when you know their IP, right? Nope, not hard at all. Um, it, it shows up even on the main menu as well. So if you're if you're streaming, even before you start like connecting and playing, you're broadcasting it on your stream or you're recording if you're recording on screen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which good luck censoring that because it bounces around right yeah is this article from today it is yes okay and when are they saying that they're patched uh, a hot fix for it they're saying wednesday morning so the fact that you know it's go still going to be a day right you want to take bets on what they break when they fix it um well obviously not people's will to play this game because you know there's uh, uh for no matter how shitty the game how uh I guess exploitative uh, the developers are if it's a big enough IP like the Avengers there's people that will defend them. Hell, there's people that are defending Cyberpunk and it was off the Sony Play Store for months because it was broken. To the point that there's actually a subreddit that bans or at least discourages criticism of the game. Yeah. Hell, I've heard people here uh, talk about, well, particularly Bethesda games, and one in particular because where I live, saying, well, it's uh, broken, buggy, and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, boring at times, but uh, that's a Bethesda game for you. No, don't do that. Don't defend these companies. They don't give a damn about you if you're paying them. Or I should say a, a damn about you after you pay them because... You know, you're literally just a dollar sign to them. You are their bottom line. And as long as you're, you know, forking over however much money for whatever game, you're not going to fix anything. You're not going to change their practices just because, well, I, I yelled at them on Twitter to fix their thing. No, just stop playing the game. It's not like there's not other games out there to play, right? Yeah. Now, you might be out of luck if you're a Star Wars fan or an Avengers fan, because, right, but... Because all that's out there for those games is bullshit, unless you want to play some older games. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, there's other games you could play, right? Yeah, you could play Sword Art Online! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. Yeah, you could go yeah, the Yahweh could... route, right? Absolutely. You're, but yeah, you're, I mean, you're you're right. You're nothing but a dollar sign to these companies, and they want your interest until you've bought something from them, and then they don't care until until it's time to sell you the next thing or the DLC. And they're only or... interested in doing the the bare minimum to make that happen. 
yeah, the DLC or the Amiibo, if we're talking Nintendo, especially if they're locking a uh, a major uh, quality of life feature behind it, because yeah, yeah you need 25 bucks to uh, get another uh, health power up in uh, the new Metroid game, right? Absolutely. And okay. uh, and no, I'm actually not joking. They're doing that, by the way. I know you're not. I hate how that, how, and I also hate the term like fanboyish, but I hate how fanboyish like the games industry is. As far as things go, the only thing that I can think of that comes close are, is sports. And I, how people get so invested in their thing. I would go uh, really hardcore music fans. Ones that are dedicated to like a particular band or group. You know, yeah, I suppose. Uh, no matter how shitty uh, uh, the people are, as long as uh, they play a halfway decent uh, rendition of whatever song, eh, good enough for them. Yeah, that's fair. And certainly there are, you know, over-the-top fanboys or whatever for any activity or whatever but i feel like gaming and sports produce you know per per capita or by volume or whatever you know the most of them and it sucks because it makes it harder maybe not impossible maybe impossible but you know maybe not but at the very least harder to have uh, you know honest open discussions about issues that exist within the industry and and game development as a whole and pushes us towards worse games. I mean, certainly, I don't think that there will ever not be good games. Like, new indie developers come ar- around all the time. Um, AA studios find their niches all the time. But the sort of the, I guess you could say, like, temple franchises that we, you know, know and love or whatever, or maybe used to love, <laughs> just get worse and worse over time because of an inability to address... Or, or maybe an unwillingness instead of inability well, I, to address these issues I think, on a on a large scale. I think part of it is uh, also tied up still in how. Well, let's just throw sports in here as well because it, it's kind of the same root cause. Is that there's still that idea of oh, it's just a game, you know, uh, get over it. It's uh, not holding the developers accountable or uh, the players or whatever accountable on the sports side of things but being dismissive of criticism of the industry because it's just a game or it's just entertainment or it's just whatever you know yeah go I, I, why don't you do something better with your life right there, yeah. there's it, it is slowly changing in my opinion uh that uh i think more of the uh, general population is starting to get burnt by like pre-ordering uh, some of the more shady and shitty practices of game development or game publishers um, where it's not becoming or it's becoming more of a general issue than just something that niche players uh, have to deal with. You know, there's, yeah. there's more stories out there of some kid emptying their parents' uh, bank account because they were uh, playing a mobile game and uh, uh, didn't realize that it was... Uh, buying all these coins was real money or yeah. or going on FIFA and buying or trying to get the uh, their dream team and uh, uh, ultimate team and not realizing, oh, yeah, that's real money I'm spending. Or they might not even ha- really understand the concept of money yet because these games are marketed as E for everyone. So it's sort of like how television was, you know, back when we were growing up where it was treated as you know, something to keep the kids busy. Or yeah, or yeah, or early consoles. Well, okay, for me, probably earlier consoles. But there was never the risk of me accidentally buying, you know, a bunch of DLC or a bunch of microtransactions because they didn't exist yet. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I've not thought of this before, kind of the way that you said it. And I'm gonna, or what you just said, and I'm gonna say it a little in a slightly different way. It probably you know, more coherent. Like suckers born, huh? Yeah, a suckers you know, born the... every minute. Yeah. I think the game, I think you're, I hope you're right. I see some of this, but maybe this is just me being sort of hyper-focused at, because of, you know, our, us participating at the enthusiast level. But anyways, I think the game industry is burning out people faster than it's getting new suckers, you know? And I, I, don't, I don't, I don't intend that to be like sort of derogatory, but sort of following the metaphor we've got here. Well, I would you say. Know, when, uh... when people don't know something, they don't know anything, you know, like people who have never played games before or 
you know, maybe their parents didn't play. Because my kid is in a position where it's like, I play games and he plays games. And I see, you know, microtransactions and DLC bullshit in games that he plays. And he's like, oh, I want to buy this. It's like, okay, let's have a, a conversation about money and about what this means and how, you know, what you can spend and do. And like, I, I will sit there with him and explain that to him. Not every kid is going to have that, even if they have parents who play video games. But I yeah. think that that's going to be more prevalent as time goes on. Yeah. Um, anyways. Yeah. Uh, and I think part of it uh, is uh, is something that we're seeing, especially with the Avengers, you know, picking them almost at random, uh, where there's reports of Marvel's Avengers losing 96% of their player base since launch. Now, honestly, not that big of a deal. Uh, until it's time to sell DLC and microtransactions, because they already still got that sixty bucks per player, or seventy bucks or whatever, right? Yeah, or more if they bought some kind of special edition or something. But we, I think we are starting to see people that got burnt starting to wise up. And yes, we are at the enthusiast level. Even if you just go to like r slash games, that's something that the general population doesn't do. It's sort of like how. Uh, the general population, whenever they want to go see a movie, they might watch a trailer on uh, YouTube, and that's it. If that. They don't go to IMDb and see, um, okay, uh, what has this director done before? Or uh, what's the entire cast? Maybe read a review or two. They don't do that. They just go go out and uh, you know, have a night on the town and watch a movie at the theater. Or you know, rent it on uh, Redbox or uh, Google or whatever. And uh, just stream it at home. They don't, you know, uh, need to do that because they view it as a disposable evening. And gaming, while more expensive to the general population, is still the same thing. Well, I didn't like that game, but oh well, it was, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Eh, right? Yeah. But I do think that's less of a population that uh, is able to just eat that as a loss. Especially whenever you have games that, you know, uh, just kind of waste your time for a long time. So even though, uh, well, using Sword Out Art as an example, if you weren't invested in it, the fact that there was so much of a grindy nature to it, honestly, rightfully so, because it is emulating an MMO, which are as grindy as a barista hopped up a uh, uh, coffee, right? <laughs> Indeed, they I like that. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's simulated the experience properly. However, if you're not into that, well, it doesn't matter if you had you know twenty hours of playtime for. Well, let's just use the full price. You know, what was it, thirty bucks uh, for the normal yeah. price, something like that, twenty thirty bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not enjoying it, so you know it's still you know time wasted. Uh, but there's still more of an investment both on time and money, so it's not as disposable. So I think it is going to hurt the general population more over time, even though they're not at the enthusiast level. Right. I agree with that. Um, yeah. So that was a fun, uh, like a relevant uh, tangent. Is that an oxymoron? Can a tangent be relevant? I don't know, but uh, uh, how about know. Segway? Let's go Segway. So, Ubisoft DRM breaks Might and Magic X Legacy single player and the DLC. Fuck Ubisoft in particular. Indeed. Fuck Ubisoft. I've got this in the wrong place in the notes. I'll fix that. Uh, it's on the right place on the, the topics list, but I, I put the article in the wrong place in the notes. Oh, uh, well. Car- carry on while I fix it. Okay, so uh, uh, this is one of the few times that I'll link to Gotaku without, you know, uh, fighting it as you move the link uh, as I'm trying to click on it because of course you are. Sorry. Uh, Ubisoft uh, recently trimmed their online services uh, and one of the games that they pulled uh, the server for was My Magic X Legacy and uh, it just so happens that server is important to the DRM as in the DRM phones home and if it doesn't get a response or gets an improper response, you can't get past Act 1. And guess what? Server it down? Fuck you. Yep. That's Act 1 of the base game, not even, like, the DLC. Yeah, you can't it even... It would suck. You can't even access the DLC. That's the thing. Once... Yeah. It would suck, and we would still be complaining about this if it was just the DLC that was broken now. But you can't even play past the first act of the base game. Yeah, it's just... 
uh, why? And they're still selling this game too. That's the thing is that it's still actively on sale on Steam, on UP, on on UPlay or whatever they're calling it these days. It's just, oh, and this is the only game that they pulled servers from. It's just the one that's hurt it the most. Uh, the other games that they pulled June first was Assassin's Creed Two. Uh, these are all PC titles only, by the way. Uh, Prince of Persia for uh, Prince of Persia Forgotten Sands, Far Cry Two, Anno fourteen oh uh, four, which equals seven. Uh, Mario Magic Clash of Heroes, Mario Magic X Legacy, Settler Seven, and Splinter Cell Conviction all had their online servers uh, pulled. But at least with Might and Ma- uh, uh, Magic Legacy, that was also the DRM server. So, yeah. There are works- workarounds. There are uh, patches that will essentially pirate the game and unlock the DLC. But you un- you're have to pirate your own game. And this is why I have such pause whenever there's a game that phones home for DRM. Because there's always the possibility that this situation happens. And the developer either doesn't care enough or is unable to issue a patch to remove the DRM phone home. And this is one of those cases that uh, they didn't do it. Yep. So raise the Jolly Roger. Yeah, which uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag is not on the list. At least not yet, but it will be someday because, right? Yep. I mean, I have over time waffled back and forth against Piracy. I've always been anti-DRM, because DRM is stupid and pointless and only causes problems for you who legitimately buy the game. But in the past, I've been like, well, you know, I don't really like piracy because it means developers don't get the money that they need. and uh, you know. But uh, long since those days have passed. And it, if you want to pirate something, go for it. It's re- I, 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 I think of it as reclamation at this point. Honestly, uh, piracy... Uh... Uh, pirates often have the better version of the game, not just the uh, yeah, not having to deal with DRM like this, but also often whenever the DRM is removed, the game runs better because it's not uh, yeah. doing background checks, it's not doing uh, different things, and who knows, the pirates may actually fix some of the code issues as well, which has happened before. Yeah, because of Ubisoft being a company that uh, protected people who sexually assaulted and harassed their workforce, especially in management, and did nothing about it, I'm never going to buy another Ubisoft game ever again. But I will pirate some Ubisoft games to play them, because I want to, and they look interesting. Yeah. But I'm never giving them another dime of my money, willingly or knowingly, ever again. Yeah, I think... And I'm about there with EA. I'm real close with EA. Yeah, well, we... Well, uh, you have uh, EA Pass. I'll have it again when I reactivate Game Pass. But it's... Yeah. Uh... <sighs> Honestly, I think next year I'm not even going to bother covering Ubisoft's uh, E3 uh, thing because it's just painful. I'm not sure. I don't even really have any good games anymore. I mean, unless you're a really big fan of the Assassin's Creed series. I'll pre- okay, I, I, I'll, I'll uh, back that one uh, off a little bit. I'll say, unless you're a fan of Ubisoft games, they don't have g- uh, games anymore. Because honestly, so many of their games feel the same. Exactly the same, yeah. You have pretty much the same first-person shooter in two or three different iterations. Uh, you have uh, Rainbow Six Siege in a couple iterations now with uh, their, uh, you know, totally not Left for Dead, uh, Left for Dead clone. Um, uh, you have uh, Assassin's Creed whatever. It's pretty much Assassin's Creed whatever uh, theme you have, right? Yeah. Oh, and don't forget, just dance every year. <laughs> this this year with less furries. Yeah, I've been thinking after we played Far Cry Three, I kind of wanted to play Far Cry Four, but I don't own it, so I'll probably wind up pirating that and playing it sometime in the next year. Uh, honestly, Arr, I mean, raise the Jolly Roger. I mean, if Far Cry Three is the best Far Cry that they have, oof, right? Yeah. Well, you know, if I'm trying it for free. Give it a shot, and if it sucks... I will say that Piracy it. has one other place, and that is game testing, because honestly, unless you have a couple YouTubers that you trust, and they just happen to cover uh, the game that you like, or that you're interested in, there's really little in the way of uh, legitimate game journalism out there, because there's just so much 
backroom deals and there's so much just shady business practices on the journalism side of things that there's it's tough to tell if the game was honestly legitimately reviewed or if it's you know uh, astroturfing yeah very true very true and honestly even, so, even youtubers could only cover so many games at a time and once you start yeah. getting outside of the major releases good luck finding reviews at all really yeah even really genuine you know <laughs> reviewers who you you know who i trust like you said they can only do so many games a year and they might not even be games that i'm interested in so yeah and the ones i really like uh like acg uh he goes really in depth but he could only go so in depth because yeah or so do so many games because he goes so in depth yeah and that's the problem really is that you know you're if you do like a 20 or 30 minute video about uh, a game you know it's that's you know probably 15 20 hours of gameplay at least yeah, plus the time it takes to record and edit mm -hmm. and all of that. I mean, like, even if you're recording the entire time, uh, if you're trying to make a point on, like, a glitch or uh, some sort of issue, like, uh, he did a review on the latest uh, Dungeons & Dragons game, and he was uh, talking about how the uh, uh, the game uh, like, feels anemic because of the sound design, and having to build a montage of just uh, uh, certain sound effects or how sound effects uh, uh, detract from the game that still takes a lot of time and even if he has a dedicated editor you know that's still you know you only have could do so much unless you have multiple editors and then you start running into the you know how much money are you actually going to make on a YouTube channel especially nowadays because YouTube is kind of sh well kind of shit yeah yep you could be looking at you know to do a 30 Let's say a 30 minute video, you could be looking at 30 or 40 hours of work for that one video. And if you're a small ish YouTuber, you're you're not making, you know, the equivalent of working, you know, quote unquote, a day job doing that. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, hell, maybe you are. Uh, but when I was, yeah, I'm sure there are some that do, but I think that they would be the exception as yeah. opposed to the rule. Yeah. When I was doing the quick look series, you know, uh, to do a 15, 20 minute video first impressions uh i was still putting in a good uh four five six hours on a game and for some games that just doesn't work especially like a jrpg where uh, in order to get out of the tutorial you know you're looking at 10 15 hours yeah uh one of the uh jrpgs i covered i put like 20 hours into uh to just you know get more of the gameplay i mean it also happened to be one of the better uh Yo, off of the wall JRPGs I played, but it was just you're right. Yeah. If it turned out that yeah, you know, it just was not a good game, you know, that's wasted time and also, yeah, you know, doing oddball games, you know you know, honestly that was kind of a waste of time because you know, just didn't get the uh the traffic and just because of the nature of the beast, uh search engine optimization really focuses on just a handful of really popular channels and on a particular topics. So if you're not in that perfect storm, you know, you're out of luck. That's why Let's Play stuff is so popular on YouTube because it can be out the day of. And unless you somehow have a review copy, which good luck with that one because a lot of times those come with some massive, massive amounts of strings attached. You're not going to have that out on day one. You're, as I hit the mic, uh, you're not going to have that on day one and miss out on that big wave of content. Right. And it doesn't matter how good your content is. If uh, you're the 20 millionth channel to cover Minecraft, you're going to get buried. Indeed, you will get buried for, for games like Minecraft. For lots of games, honestly. But especially Minecraft. Yeah, and that's why, well, uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, looking at Gotaku once again. They're talking about how Back for Blood will require always online internet connection, Ooh, right? But that's also a multiplayer-focused game, so that's a little different. Yeah, but also still, ugh. does it not have like local multiplayer? Or uh, I don't know. I, I'm not. I didn't click the article. It just says read more. Back for Blood will require always online internet connection, and that's terrible. 
Yeah, I'm sure I play some games that are that that have that requirement that I'm I don't realize they do. But for the for the most part, I don't I don't play games that require you to always be online. For that, you know, for all the reasons that we've discussed. Yeah. Uh, so back to topic, there is a workaround where you could go into an XML file, which for the general population, you might as well say, well, okay, so you're. Uh, hacking the uh, the GPU uh, with a uh, GUI to uh, in Visual Basic, and I've been uh, listening to far too much uh, uh, Law and Order SVU. <laughs> right. Oh wait, that's a little too coherent for uh, some of the uh, stuff on uh, uh, these uh, law shows, right? Yeah, but I mean, hacking and or hacking editing an XML L file is if as long as you're not afraid which you know someone could be and i don't necessarily blame them for that but as long as you're not afraid to to go do it it's not very difficult but you're right to someone who doesn't know or who doesn't have experience or who is worried about breaking something else accidentally like that sort of stuff could be really daunting yeah so just like you are able to disable a uh uh the initial check at the end of the first chapter however it does nothing to uh, do the check for the DLC, so you're still screwed if you bought the DLC. Because of course you are. Fuck you, that's why. Normally, uh, it would be like, fuck you, pay me, but it's actually, you paid me, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, Ubisoft being Ubisoft. Which is shit. Ubisoft and is and this, shit. this broke, uh, well, yeah, on the first, but, uh, the news article, or the News article is from yesterday, and it really started making the rounds on Reddit the other day. So we'll see if there's, uh, you know, some sort of uh, fix for this. But honestly, not counting on it. Yeah, agreed. Not counting on it. Yeah, All right. and mind you, this is a game from uh, 2014, so it's not even that old of a game, which is kind of right. Yeah. So hey, if you so, if you spent that uh, uh seven bucks, you're fucked on the DLC. Yep. You know what else is a not that old game that's uh, having parts of it uh hop- hacked off? That's right, Fallout seventy six. Yeah, the battle royale game mode Nuclear Winter closes this September. Yeah, the ghoul just had a, another piece of its uh, body drip off. <laughs> also, oh. So, I didn't know really anything about this game mode, except that it, it existed. So, from the article, in case you're like me and don't give a shit about Fallout 76 because you're a normal, well-adjusted adult, <laughs> Fallout 76's Battle Royale game mode will be sunset later this year. Developer Bethesda has announced, uh, introduced to the post-apocalyptic MMORPG two years ago to the day. I guess that's the day this article came out, which is, what, today? Uh, Recently? It was... Whatever. Uh, recently because uh pc game and doesn't have a a date on their article but yeah you know it's recent right the mode sees 52 players fight it out to be the last survivor standing but bethesda has decided to end support for it come september that's because fallout is a is supposed to be a single player rpg bethesda you morons nobody's interested in this crap you know i I wanted a multiplayer, well, either Elder Scrolls or Fallout game, but I wanted it to be like two people clo- co-op. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, have a buddy. I didn't want to have to deal with griefers. I didn't want to have to deal with your shitty microtransactions. I didn't want to have to deal with, you know, fall- a Fallout game that took two expansions to barely become a Fallout game, right? Yeah, yeah, just. Just um, to almost be a Fallout game. Yeah, and with the uh, trailer from the uh, upcoming expansion that they teased at E3, it really feels like they're going to force people to play it several times with different characters to uh, experience the content because there feels like it's... Uh, well, for one, they're introducing a some sort of faction choice, it sounds like. But also, with the way Fallout 76 is built... And how grindy it is because it is a survival, or, or barely a survival RPG. It's just such a long grind, and honestly, with some of the d- design decisions I've seen people document, it's just, I don't know why people, well, one would play it, but two played a second time to 
experience the other faction, right? Yeah. Um... I know that there's this Skyrim Together mod, which is a multiplayer mod for Skyrim. Yeah, but it's not official. I know that there were a... That's the yeah. thing. It's that I, I always wanted an official, you know, non... Well, uh, okay, non-buggy, but, you know, it's Bethesda, so... Uh, less buggy uh, version where you could actually, you know, go questing with someone as a companion. Because that's the thing, is that the companion system has been in the Elder Scrolls series for ages. Yeah. And as well as the Bethesda version of Fallout. Oh, the original Fallout had a proper companion system as well, uh, with its more focus on an RPG element. But that's, yeah, you're starting to get into a tough area to deal with multiplayer, but where they reimagined Fallout as uh, more of a shooter and with a more action oriented uh, um, uh, situation where you're able to have multiple people. Uh, yeah, it would be no problem to uh, have somebody take control of a, of a second character, or yeah, you know, uh, even bring in another survivor, right? Yeah, I know that there were a couple of of janky mods for Oblivion too that let you play co op online. One of them was like uh, it did like the whole uh, Baldur's Gate camera thing, so that it was like a a, a floating camera. That would get closer when the players were together, and then farther apart when they were separated from each other. Mm -hmm. And then there was one that create would let you create a server, but that one I think had lots of issues. That, I don't know; they both had problems. Maybe there are other. I'm sure there were other mods that I don't know of. I just remember those two from you know five six years ago, being like, "Oh, I want to play Oblivion with some people," and like looking at the mods and trying to get them to work, and it never worked. So and that's the thing. I said that they made a, well, okay. I realize part of the reason why they made Fallout 76 is that it's essentially a, a mod of Fallout 4, just on a different map. There's not a, it didn't take a ton of story writing to, to create Fallout 76 compared to a typical Fallout game. It, yeah. it was a lot simpler, so it was a cash grab. And, you know, it was a cash grab on the survival RPG, which... Because Bethesda is a lumbering corpse of a AAA studio before they got bought out by Microsoft, you know, they was able to cash in on that whole, you know, big boom on survival RPGs only like six or seven years after the fact, right? Yeah. <laughs> Late to market, huh? Never an issue. Sent, put it out the door anyways. I do hope, I and mean, we've talked about this a couple of times, I do hope that some oversight from Microsoft will get Bethesda to focus in on doing. I somehow you know, doubt the it. types of games that they do well. I, I mean, certainly Oblivion and Skyrim and all that jazz. Like they have their problems. I'm not saying they're perfect games. We've talked about them at length, but generally, people seem to like them, and they are like, you know, decent single player games. I somehow doubt it whenever uh, the Bethesda, or sorry, the Microsoft Bethesda conference is talking about Starfield as a Todd Howard game. That, That's true. That, that, that doesn't excite me. As a matter of fact, that, that you know, kind of warns me away from it. Yeah. Fair play. So they're still learning Todd Howard, Tow, Todd Howard all over Starfield. Yep. Maybe they're using so Starfield as a, uh, like, a, just a noose to let them, you know, get enough rope to hang himself so they could get rid of him. <laughs> that would be interesting. Looking at like a history of Bethesda, because there's, you know, I I've watched a couple of YouTube videos talking about like the history of the Elder Scrolls series and the history of Bethesda, like where Todd Howard used to be compared to where he is now. And it's just like one of those stories of like where someone goes astray, like success goes to their head and they just go Oh, the astray. Peter Monaghan story. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. I mean, you know, he it's not like he was perfect or whatever. Like, obviously nobody is. And he made mistakes and there were flaws with his game design. But, like, back in ye olden days, when he was working on the much earlier games, or, you know, the, old, yeah, the older, earlier games in the Elder Scrolls series, and then, you know, Morrowind, like, you know, he, he had a pretty good idea of, of how to develop a game. And then the more successful that they got, the more he just was like, ah, fuck it. I'm Todd Howard. I'll do what I want. Yeah, I'll uh, create Todd Ray's uh, coming up from the ground in Fallout 76. 
<laughs> oh, indeed. Everybody wants some good Todd rays, right? <laughs> um, okay. We have talked about this far longer than we thought that we would. Uh, so let's move on. Um, so technically these are also news articles, but we got them from the feedback and uh, yeah, submission yeah, we got, section on our Discord. Yeah, we got beamed for taking our time to uh, get to stuff because E3 and stuff. So, okay, fuckers, here we go. <laughs> I'm very happy that we got memed. I'm down for that. So we're, uh, we're doing a couple this I'm week. I'm not since we're hating Christensen, you know? <laughs> True. Uh, we're, True. We're pouty. I mean, I, look. We're pouty emo uh, uh, Anakin Skywalker. Say what you want about his acting. That's fine. I probably would agree with a lot of it. But pouty Hayden Christensen, kind of cute, kind of hot. I'd hit that. Just saying. So I'm. I feel flattered to to be thought of at, that attractively, because I'm definitely not. You know, maybe if you just get like a good like face shot and like a, you know you get me at the right angle with my beard and stuff, I could go for like the rugged look. But then you zoom out and it's like, oh, he's just like fat and smushy. Like, oh no, that's not attractive. Uh, oh no, he went from uh, looking somewhat decent to looking like a Star Wars fan. <laughs> oh, oh no, you got. I walked into that one. You got me there. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're doing a couple this week that didn't require as much prep. Um, I think we're planning, I mean, I guess we didn't like officially set this in stone, but kind of based on our conversation before next week, we're going to try to tackle the epic court case. Yeah. Uh, ep- yeah. The well, we'll, epic Apple court case. Yeah. We'll sit and watch legal legal for uh, about an hour. Very true. And he's also very attractive. Yeah. But a lot of that is like the, you know, uh, five hundred dollars suit that he uh, mail orders, right? Yeah. Oh, and we just got a new one. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> we'll we'll throw that one in next week too. Um. Oh, we did. Uh, then check because. Uh, it, oh no no we just we got it when we first started recording at ten thirty, but that's okay. We'll get to that one next week. Um, or something. Uh, oh boy, game stunk. Uh, yeah. So for for this week though we're tackling two of them what that would have been that we thought were going to be a little bit easier to talk about and ease us into this. So the first one of the two man arrested for allegedly attempting to assassinate Genshin Impact Studio founders or yeah founders plural. So um yeah <laughs> that that's a whole bucket of crazy huh yeah um. So let's see. So it's basically the, they're upset about bunny girls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, um, I I read over this, and it's one of those things that, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah. The the, the like quote uh, or whatever from the article. A recent update had added bunny costumes to the game, but these cosmetic items weren't available in China. Fan backlash that complained of the content being disrespectful to China and the characters that the costume was meant for resulted in it being removed. So. Bunny costumes were added. There were complaints. They were removed, and this guy uh, took took offense to that. I took that personally. And he took that very personally. The 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 telltale style. Um, you know, he will remember this. Is his name in the article? I don't see it, but honestly, I'm glad it's not. Yeah, but I was just gonna use his name and be like, he remembers. Yeah, so but it's he, so it's um, not Genshin Impact. It's uh. Hanukkah Impact Third, uh, Genshin, uh, the developer's other uh, title. Uh, 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 it's just Genshin Impact is the one that's kind of you know, caught on fire. So that's the one everybody thinks of. So yeah. it was bunny costumes for that game that was removed, and that triggered him because I guess he wanted to fuck rabbit characters. I mean, same, but I wouldn't go stab anybody over it. That's the thing. Well, obviously it's, you don't like. Up, obviously you don't love him enough. Then I guess not. Um, but he showed up at their building um, with a knife, and it says he tried to infiltrate, which seems like a, a a polite way to say he tried to break in and got caught by security. Um, but he was he was arrested. This happened at the end. I of have April, a feeling. So it's been. I have a feeling it'd be like one of us trying to infiltrate somewhere, only filthy, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. With just a hate boner? Just a huge, massive hate boner. So this happened back in April, and that should tell you something about how long we had a hiatus. As I've uh, been slowly replacing all the parts of my computer, trying to figure out uh, what the fuck. Yeah, so 
interesting to like you know they they have an official statement on removing the bunny girl costumes and uh they did the standard corporate apology thing i mean this is an aside i guess yeah, but it's uh, like towards the end yeah, as the we JPEG. reflect on our decisions we promise to safeguard the quality of our content with higher standards my voice is getting more nasally as i go along on purpose uh, to ensure this kind of issue never occurs again like whatever shut up uh, i can't stand uh, the corporate thank, non-apology thank you thank you jim sterling you're welcome and also, it's the the apology JPEG. The, yes, the apology JPEG. I mean, you can more or less cut out any one of those apologies, replace a few words to to make it the you know the thing you want to apologize for, and then paste it, and you got it. Like it's it bugs me real bad how similar all of these non apology messages are. I hate it. Uh, sort of like whenever you have the YouTuber apology, it's the yeah you know, uh, if it's uh, a actual video of the person they either uh or you know start setting or set down and then just all the time just go oh well (laughs) right yeah yeah there there was i don't i don't know what happened or what prompted that i probably should go to out of the loop r slash out of the loop and and try to figure it out but speaking of that the guy had like three or four youtube channels they did like fake pre-apologies for stuff and I'm guessing there was some kind of meme or something, and these channels just did that. But like Legal Eagle did like a fake apology video. Yeah, I saw. And... I saw Legal Eagles. I didn't watch it, and there was like one other that is, that popped up, and I'm just not sure what's going on. I, now that you mentioned it, it's like, oh yeah, well, what was that? Yeah, there were there was there were several YouTube channels that I'm sub to that did that all around the same time. And I just was like, huh. But I didn't go check it out. I'm going to assume that it's a big vlog, uh, vlogger that's uh, really big with uh, like a, a Anita's students that we have no idea who the fuck it is. Uh, did something stupid. And then apologized. Yep. And they're just copying it because making fun of it. Yeah, it became a meme. Because uh, they started off uh, just that big dramatic sigh. And then just a complete non-apology. Uh pretty much just reading one of these corporate apologies verbatim and then just promising to do better and uh and then just yeah continuing to be a shithead yeah complete guess but yeah no that's probably a good guess um but anyways yeah so that was that was the first of our our two community things the second one uh this title is kind of editorialized because one of them is a tweet with a big image and then the other one is a news article that talks about it um which is Epic spends uh, big money on free games. So Yeah, maybe they should uh, spend a, big money on actually improving their store page. hi So about a month ago, um, give or take, there was um, some, some information that was, I don't know if it was leaked, or I, I don't remember if it was leaked, if it was published, um, or what, but it shows how much money Epic uh, spent on the games that they gave away for free. Uh, actually, let me just read this chart. So there's the title. There's the seller, which is like the publisher of the game. There's the date when the uh, sort of the, the quote unquote deal was. that. So they were giving it away for free. How many copies they gave away. How much money they paid to the developer. How many new accounts were made or that they... You know, I assume they're tracking this data. How many how many new accounts were made that got this game for free? How much it cost Epic per new account? Um, and then I'm not sure what this last one is. New to Epic percentage. I think that would probably be uh, uh, just the percent of accounts that's uh, or new uh, people to the store page in general. Yeah. So, uh, so it, I, I think the biggest interesting one is just the grand total of uh, new Epic accounts, uh, just shot five million across how many games? I would have expected a lot more. Well, so this is a pretty common practice for uh, yeah. online. Now, now mind I'm gonna say you, retailers. Well, I was going to say, mind you, this is up to the giveaway of everything. Eh? Uh, that yeah. that was. <laughs> Uh, in September of 2019. So this is before... Yeah, that is a bit yeah. old. But it's still, yeah, 
it it's, it's seems like very low numbers for what they're giving away. Yeah, well, see, they're. I mean, what they're doing is they're playing the long game. They're uh, what these companies have are, are doing, and Netflix is the earliest example I can point to that I'm familiar with. Um, there's a podcast I listen to called Business Wars that talks about um, businesses and sort of business rivalries and strategies that they use to, you know, grow their companies and that sort of thing. And there's a series of episodes that talks about Netflix and Netflix back when it first started getting into digital movie um, distribu- distribution, which of course we know is streaming now, but that wasn't what it was called originally. Um, had a, a sort of a tit for tat back and forth with Blockbuster and Netflix wound up buying subscribers from Blockbuster for, I want to say like $200 a subscriber or something like that. Like it's, it's crazy, but they, 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 you know, sort of took a gamble on like the long play of like, it will pay off. We will keep these people as our subscribers long enough that it pays off and then we will make money. And it has paid off um, with how much money Netflix has made, you know, off of that subscriber base. And that's what Epic is doing here. They're trying to, you know, buy subscribers or, you know, buy, they're, they're buying accounts as opposed to subscribers. They don't have a subscription service yet. yet. I'm sure they'll have one, but they don't yet. But they're trying to buy accounts to get them in the ecosystem in the long run they will make back that cost and at least for this time period you go all the way down to the bottom and it gives you the totals and the averages on average they pay two dollars and 37 cents for a new account that's nothing for you know epic game studios is a multi-billion dollar company you know two two dollars and 37 cents an account is nothing to them and I'm sure that they will have recouped their costs if they haven't already, you know, by current year. They will have soon. Um, Epic is, is you know, undercutting the competition as much as they can with free games. And the way that they do their discounts, they have discounts on part. And I know you don't go to the Epic store, so I'm explaining this I guess, yeah. as much to you as I am to the audience. They have discounts that are on par with Steam, but then they also give you an additional $10 off. Um, like a coupon for an additional ten dollars off your purchase if it's uh over fifteen dollars. So, you, you know, it, it it's it's for every individual purchase. Like you get a coupon for every purchase. So, um, you know that you're incentivized to buy multiple games on their service. And and what they're banking on, I'm sure, is that if people get enough of a library between the free games and their their sales then they will start buying games more regularly on Epic anyway. Which is why I, um, Valve was kind of shot back and during the big sales, which, hey, one's happening uh, Thursday. Uh, they've yeah. uh, been more often than not having some sort of big discount that you can cash in. Yeah. But, I mean, Epic has been doing the $10 coupon thing since, maybe not since the store launched, but at least since 2019. Was that the year that the store launched? Was 2019? Or was it 2018? I don't remember, but you know, very early on, they had been doing the ten dollar discount on any purchase over fifteen dollars when they do their sales, you know, and you get the coupon and stuff. And I mean, that that's all that this is. That's a hundred percent what this is. And in the grand scheme of things, two dollars thirty seven cents a user average cost is not that much. And you know, you look at individual games, like for example, you look at Celeste, um, which you know we did for Game Club. You didn't like it, you know, I did. Whatever, Celeste cost them. Twelve dollars per user to get those new users in their system, but while certainly there is going to be some overlap, I bet the same type of player that plays Celeste is not the same type of player who plays Subnautica, which was the first game that they gave away, cost them a dollar seventy four a user. You know that that sort of conversion that they're doing here, and but in, in the long run. You need people who buy games like Celeste just as much as you need people who buy games like Subnautica, just as much like you need people who buy games like, uh, let's look at a couple of the other ones on here, Slime Rancher, The Witness, um, now, Fez. Now, the game I would really be interested in seeing is not on this list when they gave away, gave away GTA. Just how much did it cost them and how many accounts did they get? Yeah. I mean, I bet it. It I, I would mm. because honestly, I don't know because honestly, looking at the list, uh, it's like a who's who of indie games for the most part, with a 
couple uh really old AAA games like Batman uh Arkham. I'm assuming Arkham Asylum, uh Metroid Metro Twenty Thirty Three Redux, which cost them nothing. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, it's mostly. I mean, some of the early stuff that they gave away: World of Goo, The Witness, uh, Slime Rancher, right? Yeah. I mean, ending darlings for sure, but, you know, it wasn't, as, you know, it's not GTA. Yeah. But GTA is also in that weird situation where Rockstar has been focusing so much on the online component and those shark cards that, you know, it might actually make them money in the long run to give it away. Yeah. And, you know, probably why I'm never going to play is that they're never going to cut it down to, you know, an interesting price to me because, honestly... I want to play the single player, but uh, knowing that you know the DLC that they had planned for the single player is never going to come out, uh, so there's likely some story threads that you know just will never get resolved. And I'm one of those weirdos that actually like to play GTA for the story. Same, uh, even though the story is usually wacky and honestly kind of nonsensical, but right. But that's part of its charm. But anyways, I, you know, Epic is a shitty company. Pretty much all companies are shitty companies, right? Like, you know, it's not... But it, but Epic is a shitty company. But this has been a smart move for them from a business perspective. And it's not like, oh, well, you gotta respect them. Like, because I, I don't. But, you know, as far as... We've talked about this before on the show. I've heard other people talk about it before. Like, Epic sure is giving away a lot of games. I wonder what it's costing them. I wonder if it's worth it. For the data set that we have... I mean, I don't claim to be an expert, but I think, you know, because of some of my interests and my, you know, business, like some of my background business experience and stuff, um, you know, it was worth it. I guarantee that they were pleased with that, you know, sort of in the company way that's like, well, we did good. We like this, but we need more, you know, but this is, is nothing but good news for them on, uh, you know, the their business front on with the Epic Store. I mean, I just opened it up right now. Like, they've got two games for free right now. Overcooked 2, and oh, I clicked on it. Let's see the other game. Hell is Other Demons. Uh, obviously, we've we've played Overcooked 2, and we've talked about it on the show. Hell is Other Demons looks like a, a platforming action platformer. So, more like um, Hell for you. <laughs> yes, Hell for me. But, um... You know, almost everything in my Epic library of games that have been given away for free. So, like, stuff that's, li- every, you know, everything listed there. They gave away Borderlands at one point last year, I think. Like, the the Borderlands games. Like, not Borderlands 3, but they gave away Borderlands 1, 2, and the pre-sequel. Um, well, they gave away Control. Well, remember, they also had a, a timed exclusivity on Borderlands 3 when it came to PC. Uh, so yeah, that's true. So they were trying to entice Borderlands players to, uh, hey, you already got an account, may as well get three. Although, yeah, from the reviews I've heard, eh, Borderlands three didn't do all that well. Yeah, but so you know, like you mentioned, like you know, sort of the, those quote unquote yeah, it, AAA titles. yeah, these games they have given away more of those. Yeah, yeah like these... Borderlands one, two, and three, Control. Um, I mean, they're lost. Le- really the, it's the idea of the loss leader. Yeah, absolutely. Um, GTA 5, you, you mentioned that already. Uh, Just Cause 4, um, and I, I haven't gotten all the games. I don't get free games that I know I'm never going to play anyways. And also, it's possible I missed something. Oh, Sunless Sea. I forgot they gave away Sunless Sea. They gave away Surviving Mars recently. I guess it's not a AAA title, but... Yeah. Speaking of grabbing games, I need to make sure that there's nothing... Oh, shit. That's right. Um, pro- they gave away the original Watch Dogs. Yeah, which uh, Ubisoft gave away... Uh, both that and the second Watch Dogs, like, several times already, so. Yeah. But, you know, they, I mean, they are giving away AAA titles as well, mm-hmm. so, you know, they're trying to span as much of the market as they can to get as much, you know, sort of market saturation as possible. And we're only looking at, you know, the first year, let's say, of releases that they gave away. I mean, I, when it becomes. Un, you know, whenever it, it they're not making enough money, you know, whenever it tilts the other direction and you start to see probably average costs to get new users in the 20 plus dollar range, I mean, maybe even before then, you know, but definitely by that point, they're 
that's going to be the time if they haven't quit already that they're going to start pulling back on that because mm-hmm. it's not worth it to them. You know, you'll have hit sort of market saturation where you've got as much as you can sort of reliably expect to get. Netflix has ran into that problem as well. Going back to my other example, Netflix is spending hundreds of dollars on new subscribers because between the fact that there are many other streaming services out there now and the fact that Netflix has something like 90 million accounts, or maybe it's they're trying to get 90 million accounts and they've got something like 70 or 80 million. It's like there's just, you know, there's not enough people anymore for them. So when Epic hits that point, they'll stop. I mean, it's it. the, it's, I hate to compare them with a the multi-level marketing, but yeah, there's only so many people out there. Yeah. Very true. Okay, here we go. And this was released, this document was released as part of the lawsuit. That's that's where it came from. Um, the Epic Apple lawsuit. So, I mean, we've just been talking about that picture. We haven't even mentioned the, the article from Ars Technica, which I'm just going to very quickly skim over this and see if there's anything that we haven't touched on that we need to bring up. But... You know, the article makes a lot of the points that Yeah, just how I, long I made, can they afford to uh, throw money at it? I mean, I mean, the thing to me is that they keep throwing money at it. Uh, yeah, their Fortnite money, which, you yeah, know, Fortnite is printing money for them, just like uh, Valve, well, Valve has with, you know, Steam, to try to prop up their game store. But honestly, every time I've heard about the game store on Epic side of things, it's just seems like a worse product. And that's before you even get into, well, honestly, the sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. I already have a lot of game accounts uh, scattered across everything. I don't need another one for a handful of games. So, right? Yeah. There's a couple of things. That, like, I mean, I've used the, you know, the Epic Store and I've, I've played games through the Epic Launcher or whatever. There's a couple of things it does better than Steam. The, the thing that it does the most better, the, the best, whatever is the way that it handles game installs. Because Steam is really weird about where it installs games. And you will wind up with files in multiple places without fail. And sometimes, especially if you want to go mod a game, or if you want to find screenshots that are taken. Um, like, for example, Stardew Valley. I've been playing Stardew Valley a lot recently. Taking a couple screenshots, post them in Discord. You, there's, there's like a a tool or whatever in Stardew Valley where you can take a picture or a screenshot of your entire farm, um, you know, a big bird's eye view. That picture is not saved in the regular Steam screenshots folder. You have to go find it in your app data folder in Windows. So you can't even go yeah, but, to like... Uh, is that a Steam fault or is that because of, uh, in this case, Stardew Valley doing it? I don't know. But the the point is, is that Maybe I'm, you know, maybe this isn't Steam's fault per se, but uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying games. to buy, be a Steam uh, fanboy, but it's just one, one of those cases where uh, it, it honestly sounds more like there's no set standard for PC games. So you have, you know, hundreds of different developers doing different things and it makes like stuff like the My Documents folder utterly useless. It makes app data absolutely a nightmare to go through because one, you know, sometimes they even uh, put it in a hidden folder. Uh, uh, they may uh, put it in the My Games folder of rarity, uh, it seems. It may just be uh, a uh, folder in My Documents. It may be uh, somewhere else for sta- save files or screenshots. It's just, it's more of a nature of the beast on PC gaming, it sounds like. Or, or uh, to me, it sounds like. And it's more yeah. just, yeah. Uh, Steam just doing whatever because, you know, it's how PC gaming is. So it does, yeah. So, so I do think it's uh, kind of a false uh, uh, equivalently and uh, equivalency in that one. In my experience with Epic, compared to my experience with Steam, anytime I need something to, to go do a mod or to find a save file or to find a screenshot, it's in under the Epic folder. And then there's a folder for each game you install. Yeah, but I think and, that might just everything be is more there. curated. Maybe, but if they're curating it or making their developers curate it, I, that's still better than however Steam handles that. I mean, the Steam Store, way better, way easier to navigate, way more tools, way better everything. 
the Steam overlay is better than the Epic overlay. Um, but, you know, Epic does do a couple of things better. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and- you know, I mean, that's that's how I got pulled into the ec- ecosystem, honestly. Like, those free games and the big old discounts. And who knows, you know, when they stop doing it, if they stop doing it. I mean, I'm to the point where I'm just going to go wherever the game is the cheapest if I'm going to buy something. And usually that winds up being on Steam. But it, it And also, I mean, Steam has, as far as, like, the big, quote, unquote, game, you know, online game retailers go, Steam's got the, the most. Um, but... I mean, honestly, whatever, there's, like, a Epic uh, exclusivity deal, I just put off on it. I mean, I... Oh, I, yeah, I, no, I, I'm not gonna buy... I, I rarely buy games on launch anyway. So, waiting six months or a year, eh. Maybe they'll actually fix the fucking thing by then. Yeah. I mean, it's a rarity, but it has happened. True. But, you know, Epic at one point spent, you know, the average of $2.37 to bring me into their ecosystem. And I've spent, how much have I spent? 30 bucks? So, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll probably I got, buy a few other games I got from more them. self-respect. They have to spend more than 2 bucks on me. <laughs> I'm a cheap date. Always have been. No comment. That's fine. So yeah, I mean honestly, I'll um, just I, get my free games from uh, Prime Gaming. That's fair. I mean, I get free games from them too, and sometimes I'll I'll have you know multiple free quote unquote copies of a game from different services because you never know when one of them's gonna go, uh, you know, tits up, and won't be able to access your game anymore. Yeah, or they just go full Ubisoft, right? That's true. Fuck Ubisoft. That's what I gotta <laughs> say about them. Um, and yeah, the Ars Technica article basically talks about the same stuff that we did, only it's, it's got a more negative tone of like, oh, I don't know how long this, they can keep this up. It's like, yeah. They have Fortnite for money. That's the thing. They, they have Fortnite uh, pretty money. Much, they can keep it up for a long time. Pretty much it's until Fortnite dries up and the kids move elsewhere. I mean, and that's what this plan is, honestly. Like, they see the writing on the wall that one day Fortnite will dry up. And I don't follow Fortnite closely enough to know if that's happening. I'm sure, you know, you could go type into Google, like, is Fortnite dying? And you'd find 10 articles that said it was and 10 articles that said it wasn't. But one day it will dry up and they need to have that quote unquote revenue stream to make up for it. And this is them while they've got fuck you Fortnite money, spending it to build up a more consistent long-term revenue stream. Man, why does the company that has to actually plan ahead for its future have to be one of the worst companies in the, the gaming space? Maybe all space. Like, I think about every company that I've worked for in recent history and all they care about, and, and most companies that I see, like, on the news or whatever, and all they care about is next quarter's profits. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure people at Epic care about next quarter's profits. I'm not saying that they don't because they're shitty corporate people. But they are are making some short-term losses for long-term gains in this respect. Planning ahead. Man, they suck. Fuck them too. <laughs> Just fuck all of them. Play indie games. Unless it's the guy who made Five Nights at Freddy's. That's not on the news topic that this week. Yeah, I, but I wasn't sure if you'd really want to dive into that one, but whew, right? Yeah. Fuck him, too. He got his money and said some inflammatory shit. Spent a bunch of money on the, the worst politicians, and now he's, like, getting out. He's like, fuck you, I got mine. Honestly, though, that's probably the best outcome, just if he actually backs away and stays away. But anyways... Yeah, but his, yeah but his series is ending. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 Is, what's his name? Scott Cawthon? Scott Cawthorn? Yeah, I'm just... I'm pulling that out of my ass. I, I'm not I, I, I just, for the hell of it. Okay, so... Uh, uh, since we were talking Fortnite, uh, I think a good metric for how a game is doing is Twitch streaming. Especially for games that don't have stats. Uh, uh so, Jess Chatting, also known as the Pseudo Porn Channel, uh, has just over a quarter of a million viewers. Minecraft and then Fortnite at 900, uh, or sorry, uh, 92.7 thousand and then 74.2 thousand. Yeah. Let's see, uh, well, let's just round out the top 10. Valorant, uh, Call of Duty Warzone, GTA 5, Apex Legends, the Sims 4, 
that's actually one that uh, surprises me a little bit, but not at the same time. Uh, League of Legends. Uh, let's skip ASMR, also known as Quip- Creepy Whispering. And uh, <laughs> what? Uh, just, uh, all the, just the way you said that was fine. Uh, Dead by Daylight. Uh, and let's just go ahead and throw Rocket League. Then you get down to music and art and robot blocks and special events. Oh, and here you go. Uh, to finish it off, uh, because there's not just the uh, the pseudo porn channel and just chatting. There's also the pools, hot tubs, and beaches channel now. Because right. Yep. Talk about that with uh, uh, Lexi when she was on doing a guest one of one of the guest spots. We talked about that because of course we did. Of course I'm going to talk about bikini babes with with the only girl we've ever had on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm looking at the screenshots on just chatting, and there's a couple that yeah look interesting, but then there's yo know, how much cleavage can I show before I get banned, right? Yep. For me, none. As soon as they see that first chest hair, I'm getting banned. Well, let's be honest. Nobody uh, would see the first chest hair because they wouldn't be watching us because we're uh, that's true. We're old, fat, and ugly. That's true. I'll get my tits out for you. You. You don't want to see them, but I'll get them out anyways. I haven't actually watched uh, Twitch in ages, so... It... I've watched a couple of my, my artist friends when they uh, stream themselves doing art. But otherwise, mm. I, I don't watch Twitch either. You know, going to be supportive of, of, of them now that I have the time to do so. Uh, I mean, I mean, some of these just feel like they're uh, just north of uh, OnlyFans, right? Yep. Or just promoting it. Because that's the other thing. Yeah, which is fine. I, t- I, t- mm. I understand OnlyFans and the appeal of OnlyFans. I don't understand the appeal of much else that falls into that like sort of risque category. Like, just go watch porn. But I, I do get OnlyFans. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean that. Know, I mean that. Paying. I mean that is porn. Uh, well, yeah, I know, <laughs> but I just I don't understand why you would go watch a Twitch stream of a half naked lady. Or or dude, whatever you're into, when when you could just go to Pornhub or X Hamster or RedTube or any of these other porn sites, I've never understood that. I also don't understand strip clubs for the same reason. Like, I mean, unless you're a real high roller and can go to the right kind of strip club and pay the right kind of money, they throw you out if you touch the girls or guys or whatever. You know, like so if you can't touch them. Just stay home and watch it for free on the internet. Anyone who wants to talk to me about porn later, by the way, feel free to, you know, light up my my DMs or whatever. Uh, talk about no. it. <laughs> that's yeah. You're gonna take a hard pass on talking about porn. Yeah, that's a, that that's a negative ghost rider. The pattern is full. That's fine. Anybody wants to talk to me about porn, that's cool. Although I uh, I forgot uh, I had this one channel followed. I'm gonna have to. Go watch it at some point, or subject Adita to it. Iron Chef Japan twenty four seven. Twitch stream. Nice. nice. I was. Oh, I remember. I got. I got sidetracked from my sidetrack before I could bring up my other sidetrack. Now that we're kind of wrapped up that topic, uh, I went and and did a quick look through out of the loop to try to find stuff about YouTube apology videos, and the most likely culprit that I found. Um, is uh, do you remember about a month ago when John Cena did the apology video to China? No. Okay, so about a month ago, John Cena did an apology video to the People's Republic of China because he said that um, Taiwan was its own country in a promotion for a movie that was coming out in in China, whatever movie he's mm-hmm. in that's coming out or that just came out or whatever. I don't know. I don't follow John Cena. Um, and so he did an apology to them. Uh, and as far as I can tell, that spawned like an apology video meme where people apologize for stupid shit. Cause it's like, obviously Taiwan is its own country. China can go fuck itself. Okay. Uh, Just, you know, qu- it's the country of China. So they got a military that could, you know, kick my ass. Uh, question. Answer. Uh, when, uh, people are doing the memes, how many of them had uh, Winnie the Pooh in the uh, video? Oh, I don't know. Good question. Uh, for um, those who I... don't know, Winnie the Pooh is banned in China <laughs> because there was a meme going around that 
Winnie the Pooh looks like the uh, dictator in China. Or, sorry, president or whatever. Dictator. And, yeah. Uh, there, there were so many uh, good memes. Uh, the, my favorite one I saw was uh, him and Obama walking. And then it was, uh, what's the difference between these two pictures? Yeah, me, uh, yeah template. And it was Winnie the Pooh and uh, Tigger and Obama and the president of China. <laughs> There is no difference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I'm now. I don't see Winnie the Pooh in the Legal Eagle one. Oh, uh, that's just that, that, that's through. a disappointment. Yeah. And then what's her YouTube channel? Julie Milky. She's a, a Canadian YouTuber who does um, sketch comedy videos, and like she plays opposite herself. She did one, and I at first I thought the joke was like, oh, she's Canadian, so she's apologizing because she's Canadian, and she's like you know, making a riff on her own stereotype or, you know, the, the Canadian stereotype. Uh, what maple syrup and bagged milk <laughs> or, 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 or is that just Glenn and friends? I don't, I don't know what Glenn and friends, is. uh, Canadian food YouTuber. I watch. Oh, okay. Uh, his big thing is, uh, okay. Uh, pretty much all the food YouTubers, ha- once they get to a certain size, they have a thing like, uh, Chef John, uh, his big thing is uh, cayenne pepper. Uh, Cowboy Kent is mispronouncing uh, um, especially Spanish words. And also, you know, getting a little too religious these days. Uh, but Glenn uh, is bagged milk and he uh, he does like these... Uh, he'll ha- bring out the maple syrup and it's like a gallon jug of maple, of maple syrup. Right. Nice. And it's like, okay. it's like found the Canadian. <laughs> She does. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste the playlist for this to you. But she's the series where I found her was she explains the pandemic to her past self as time goes on. So she got one from like April and then like July and then like October and the New Year and I don't I don't remember exactly all the dates. She's got five videos in this playlist, but I I really like her her uh, particular brand of of sketch comedy, but. You know, if if you decide you want to watch yeah, it, I'll, you get the whole playlist for later. Yeah, I'll probably check it out at some point. Uh, I'm just looking at my uh, subscriptions now and seeing whatever apologies there were. And uh, that's the problem with YouTube is, you know, it all goes by so fast, especially, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, I don't really see any, uh, at least early on, but... Right? I just, yeah, that just mean I, that it I have wasn't a lot there. of subscriptions... Yeah. Yeah, same, but gonna... they also you know, are curated a bit. Uh, like, uh, and the problem is some of them just pop up every so often, like Captain Dissolution. That's always a fun one to watch. He did one couple weeks back of Flight of the, Flight of the Navigator, uh, just talking about all the visual effects in it and stuff. Might, might yeah. be a little old of a movie for you because, you know, you need to get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> I know what Flight of the Navigator is. Uh, he... I'm, I'm aware. Uh, he did a, like, a 45-minute video of talking about the different visual effects of uh, Fly of the Defecator and how and uh, how it was all put together and uh, a combination of very early CG and puppet, uh, tree and real and uh, uh, full-sized bottles. It was actually really interesting, even more so if you've ever seen the movie. Yeah, and I've I've never seen Fly the Navigator. I'm aware of it as a. Uh, I, I I watched you know. it ages ago, but it's also one of those things that it, I'm not sure if it's aged well, and it might just because have be because of you know it being sort of that time frame of uh, a, a little too innocent to be uh, that it comes off hokey these days. Yeah, and that might be actually part of the problem with that I'm having with uh, Nino Cooney is that a little too innocent, uh, but. Uh, that's next week's uh, uh, talk. Uh, but also, well, one, uh, it depends on how you feel about Paul Rubens, uh, Pee Wee Herman. Because it's essentially a robotic Pee Wee Herman for a lot of the movie. And can be a little grating. But- Pee Wee Herman doesn't bother me. I don't particularly think he's funny anymore, but, yeah, but when I was younger, I did. Yeah. I will say uh, one of his best parts that I uh, could recall, just off the top of my head, uh, it wasn't doing the Pee Wee Herman character. It was the spleen in Mystery Men. Which is, I like Mystery Men. I have seen Mystery Men. Yeah, it's one of those movies that everybody completely forgets about. 
Sure, they remember the song, uh, the uh, theme song, but they associate yeah. it more with with Shrek than they do Mystery Men. Yeah, I haven't thought about Mystery Men in a long time. So you're right. I had, you know, not necessarily forgotten about it, but I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, but think about it. It's kind of like the blueprint of the modern superhero uh, movie, let alone the superhero comedy. Yeah. Because it was it wasn't larger than life. It was a bit more grounded and a lot more gritty. Could get fucking dark. Now I kind of want to watch Mystery Men. Yeah, good luck finding it on streaming. You have to rent it. That's okay. You might rent it and watch it on Amazon uh, for date night or something. I don't know. I'd have to convince Katie for that, but... Yeah, Still, go, go might, into might it. Uh, it. Uh, remember that this was before even uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Or, sorry, Spider-Man. Gotta pronounce it correctly. Spider-Man. Right. Uh, so, it really does feel like the blueprint that everybody forgot about. Mostly because it's not associated with Marvel or DC. Ahead of its time. Yeah, which, boy, we got way off track. <laughs> we did indeed. Um... That's all of our stuff from the Community Corner. Uh, Rage, how can people get in, in touch with us? Well, if you wish to add to the backlog, you do so at uh, vglpodcast at gmail.com or tweet it to us, vglpodcast, which we didn't have any tweets this time around, or drop it onto the Discord, which you can find a link to that on the show on the show webpage, vglpodcast.podbean.com. Indeed. So it is 12.30. Oh, uh, okay, um, so... Uh, uh, doobly do for the discovery cube. I'm, I'm, I would I'm like jo- to skip the discovery cube. I'm, I'm joking. Cube, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, I I couldn't resist. What can I say? And it yeah. might be slightly hopped up on caffeine. Who knows? I am not hyped up on caffeine. I had some water and some green tea, which does have a little bit of caffeine in it. But with the amount of caffeine I intake on a daily basis, it might as well be caffeine free. Um, well, I had my big, uh, like, 32-ounce uh, Traveler's mug of uh, coffee just before we got started. Did do my mocha pot this time just because I didn't want to bother grinding more beans. Right. But, uh, yeah, and I've got I got my morning, my Wednesday morning meeting. We haven't had it for, like, three weeks. So, hopefully they have something important to discuss this week, and that's why they decided to have it instead of wasting our time. I'll find out in the morning. <laughs> it should have been an email. Probably. But the fact that they skipped the meeting for three weeks because there was nothing going on gives me hope that maybe they'll only hold meetings when they have things that are important. Maybe. We'll see. It's a small amount of hope. Uh, but anyway, uh, talking about a small amount of hope. Indeed. Hope that we can uh, tell them where our socials are, Rage. Well, I've been Caffeine Rage. You could uh, contact me on Twitter. Uh, Gaming with CR, or you could be my friend on Steam, Caffeine Rage, and you've been? Gaming Psychologist, you can find me on the YouTubes by searching for that. You can find me on Twitter, at JMA4707, or you can be my friend on Discord, you'll you'll see me there, you'll know me. Or my friend on Steam, uh, JArthur4707. Yeah, and uh, do not talk to him about porn, That that's a trap. You're, you're going to end up uh, watching uh, Airplanes Fuck. Oh, uh, you can totally talk to me about porn. And maybe maybe you're into watching Airplanes Fuck, and I can share some things with you. How do you think uh, SNES was, uh, 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 are born, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, once again, you can contact us via podcast at gmail.com with your letters, voicemails, game-related topics, or tweet them to us at VGL Podcast, or drop them by the Discord, vglpodcast.podbean.com. We'll post the show notes, the RSS feed, Links to all our stuff, uh, even though most of it's been long abandoned. Or if you wish to share the love, you could uh, do so by linking to us on your podcatcher of choice. We're on iTunes, Google Play. Um, We're not on Stadia, so that's one, right? That's true. We are not on Stadia. But to be fair, not many people are, so that's beside the point. Random burn? Sick burn, dude. Ugh. And our lovely, lovely patrons have made this all possible. You can find out more at patreon.com slash Podcast. Our intro and outro music is On the Ground by Kevin McLeod. You can find his work over at incompetech.com. And as always, as his lovely music starts to roll across my voice, we'll bye now. See you next time. Bye-bye.